Hello and welcome to this log cabin poncho video workshop for your circular knitting machine with 22 needles. You can wear this poncho in different styles and you can make it in any color you like. It's a simple process and I will take you by the hand to make this step by step. So hey yo, let's go. For this workshop we need a circular knitting machine with 22 needles. You also are going to use a pair of scissors and a crochet hook and yarn of course one color or more. It's your choice. I'm going to demonstrate some techniques but you can skip the chapters if you are already familiar. So. Let's go to the first step, the pattern. For this project, we are going to knit tubes with the use of the one second remove scrap yarn method and close them that way. After closing the tubes, you leave the tails on because we need them for assembling. For those who are not familiar with this method, see the next chapter in this video to learn how to do this. This is a real time saver. You are going to knit four tubes of every needed length. We start our poncho with the shortest tubes. Those are, are going to form the neck opening, the neckline of your poncho. You have to knit four tubes with 51 rows. So you are going to cast on with scrap yarn. Knit 51 rows and cast off with the scrap yarn four times. So make four tubes and leave those tails on. For the next round of your poncho, you have to knit four tubes, also with the use of the scrap yarn that does not change, four tubes of 85 rows. Then continue with four tubes of 119 rows. Four tubes with 154 rows and four tubes with 187 rows. Then you are going to connect them into your poncho and you can measure if it's long enough. When it's not long enough, you just continue with knitting another four tubes with 221 rows. And you join that to your poncho and when it's not long enough, you continue by joining four tubes with 255 rows. When it's still not long enough, just continue joining tubes by adding 34 rows to this number. And the number you get then, you do plus 34 to get the next number. But you start with four tubes with 51 rows and continue. I will demonstrate to you how you are going to join them to each other. I also have a quick workshop in the second chapter after this explanation. So hey yo, let's go. Let's start knitting and closing our tubes. This project is fun and will be finished before you know it. You have to knit these tubes with the use of scrap yarn. I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can add the scrap yarn and how you can remove it very quick. First, I'm going to start to knit with my scrap yarn a couple of rows. And then I'm going to change to another color of scrap yarn. I'm just cutting my yarn, putting it to the inside between the last and the first needle. And then I take another piece of scrap yarn and put it into my feeder, also between the last and the first needle. Make sure that the tails are long enough to reach the table. And knit one round, so every single needle has to pick the color once. I'm cutting my yarn and putting my tail between the last and the first needle as every tail I have used. And then I'm taking my working yarn. I'm 
hanging a long piece of thread inside my machine because I'm going to use it to pick up my stitches and do whatever I want to do with them. I'm going to demonstrate to you how I like to close my tube. But first, you have to put your yarn between the last and the first needle. And then you are going to knit. So what have we done? We have started with scrap yarn, changed to another color and knit one round with scrap yarn. And now I'm just knitting my desired pattern. That's not interesting because that's for a special project. And now I'm finished. I'm cutting my yarn a long piece because I want to use it to close my tube. I'm taking it out of the feeder between the last and the first needle again. And then I'm going to put my scrap yarn into my feeder between the last and the first needle and I'm going to knit one round see just the same place all the time between the last and the first needle one round so every needle just picks the yellow color in this case one time I'm taking it out of the feeder and I'm taking another piece of scrap yarn And I'm going to knit a couple of rounds with, with the scrap yarn. And after knitting a couple of rounds, there are no rules. I'm just cutting my yarn and knitting until my work drops from the machine. So I'm continue cranking when my yarn runs out until my project comes loose. Now I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to close the tube. I'm going to close the tubes with the use of my five and a half millimeter crochet hook. It's five and a half millimeter. You can search for your size in your country. Tubes have two ends, the casting on and the casting off end. And we are going to start with the casting off end. I'm turning the inside to the outside and I'm going to show you the last knitted stitches with my working yarn that are captured between the scrap yarn. And when you put all those ends to the right, you will find your working yarn and you will find those two yarn tails of that single strand row. So those three ends we need. You see that the working yarn is in the middle and the yarn end closest to you goes into the first stitch we need to close the first pair so i stick my needle through that last stitch and to the first stitch look the working yarn is in the middle and those two yarn tails are coming out of those two stitches and when you look at the rest of the stitches you will see that you can line them up easily into pairs i'm putting my needles into all the pairs so you can see how it looks looks like and this way you can see if you're doing it correct because a tube with 22 stitches has 11 pair stitches so i have to check if i have 11 pair if not i made a mistake with picking up those first pair those first two stitches now I'm putting my needle into my last pair. Those are next to each other, but also in front of each other. And now I have 11 pairs. And I'm ready to close the pairs. So I'm sticking my 
crochet hook into that first two loops and I'm taking my working yarn and with the hook I'm going to pull the yarn through the two loops and now I've started closing my tube. I'm going to pick up the next pair pulling the yarn through all three loops on my hook. From now on I have three loops on my hook every time I'm going to close a pair. And I'm going to close all 11 pairs. And my last stitch. You always end with a pair. And then I'm pulling my yarn another time through that single loop. And the tube is closed. You have the scrap yarn tails on the right. I'm turning so that my working yarn is on the right. And now I'm going to pull out that single row with scrap yarn. That easy and you can lift off the rest and now this side of your tube, the end is closed. And now we have to close the beginning of the tube and that first stitch is a little bit more difficult to find. The hidden stitch is easy to find but most people make the mistake by not searching for it so they look at the loops and they think that this stitch is the first stitch and this is the opposite stitch but it's not you have to look at where your scrap yarn goes through find the first two loops where the yarn ends of the scrap yarn go through and then you will find that the piece closest to you that stitch is a little bit hidden this is the first stitch and the opposite stitch and the, the working yarn is in between and when you're not sure you are going to count your 11 pairs again line them up And my last pair, you always end with a pair. And then you continue closing as we did at the end of the tube, exactly the same way. When you are getting used to this, you don't need all those needles anymore. They are just for learning purpose. And sometimes I make also a mistake and I don't end up with a pair. And when I don't end up with a pair, I made a mistake. So I have to undo the closing by just pulling out those stitches and start over again with finding the real first pair. And then you close it the same way. Hello. And welcome to this quick explanation how to join tubes knitted with your circular knitting machine to each other in all possible ways. You can join side to side. You can join end to end. You do that when you want to make a infinity tube, for example. And the last possibility is end to side. So I'm going to show you all three ways to join them. The first variation is end to end. I will demonstrate it 
to you and explain it with a little drawing. I take two ends of my tubes and I lay them in position. We are going to use V-stitches to join the tubes to each other. When you look at your work, you will find just under the edge V-stitches. They are all in one line and just next to each other. So you have to find your V-stitches one by one. They are all in line, so it's easy to find the top one. On the other end, you are going to find also the V-stitches from the right to the left. They are also in line, so it is easy to find them. We are going to join them one by one, so make sure that you understand how to find them and then we are going to join them to each other like this. We are going to join one V-stitch to one V-stitch. And we repeat that to the end. I'm using a contrasting color so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to find myself the V-stitches. I'm starting with the one that's just at the edge or the corner. And I'm picking it up and I'm pulling my yarn through. Then I'm going to the other end and I find my first V-stitch. This one. And I'm going to pull my yarn through also, but not all the way. Make sure you keep a space between the two pieces. And then I'm going to pick up the next V-stitch at the first end. I'm pulling my yarn through, but not all the way. And then the second V-stitch on the other end. And this is basically what we keep repeating. Picking up V-stitches on one side and on the other side. Make sure you don't pull your yarn tight and you are creating something like bars between the two pieces with your working yarn and that's okay. Continue picking up those stitches one by one. And when you're finished or your yarn is a little bit short, you just have to pull at your yarn. And then I have to continue the last few V-stitches. And the ends are joined. And now I'm going to pull at my yarn. And you will see that the ends will be joined very nice. You can pull through your yarn all the way. I'm pulling it a little bit back because I don't need that much of yarn. Make sure the tension is right. And this is how you join the ends to each other. On the inside you have a nice ridge and on the outside it looks as if it is knitted to each other. So when joining ends, just join the V-stitches one by one. The next joining is the joining side to side. We are going to join the sides of our tubes to each other. So I'm picking up my tubes, for example, like this. So we are going to join them in the length. I'm turning my example so it's more uh, clear to see what I'm going to do. And we are going to join the sides of our tubes. And that's very simple. I'm taking my contrasting yarn. We're going to join them like this. So when you put them like this, you will see lines with V-stitches 
along the edge. Again, those V-stitches. And when you line them up pretty, it looks like they're just knitted in one line. You see those V-stitches, they're just one row. See it as a rail track. And you are going to follow that track. When you stick your needle in the V-stitches, you will find those vertical bars, just like in a train track. And we are going to use those bars. We start joining with picking up one bar and joining it with a bar on the other side. And then we pick up pairs. We are going to pick up two bars at a time, just like the V-stitches. But this looks a little bit different and you end sometimes with one pair but I will demonstrate I'm going to stick my needle in the first V and I'm going to find the bar that's basically the back of the V stitch it's just one yes little piece of yarn then I'm going to stick my needle in the first V stitch on the other tube and now I keep space in between just as with the ends and I'm going to stick my needle in where it came out those are big holes and I'm going to pick up two bars a time go in where you came out pick up the next two bars make sure you get the vertical bars the right ones not the v-sticks v-stitches go in where you came out pick up the next pair and pair them up don't pull at your yarn that it goes tight because then you cannot see clear what you are doing continue picking up two bars at a time don't skip bars don't go under twice just continue following the rail track picking up the next pair of bars do that as far as possible as long as your tubes are This might look a little bit messy, but when you pull at your yarn, your tubes will be joined seamless. Your work will look like as if it is knitted in one piece on both sides. So when you join tubes side to side, it's usable on two sides. It's very simple. Just pair up the vertical bars under the v-stitches so this is the second option joining sides to sides then we have the last option and that's joining the end to the side i'm going to cut my yarn i'm going to join the end to the side um, using also the contrasting color we want to make it look like this. So for that I make a little drawing and explanation. And then I will show you how you have to join the end to the side of a tube. That is also very simple. You already know how to find V-stitches. And how to find those bars. And we are going to combine them. We are going to use the bars at the side and we are going to use the v-stitches at the end we are picking up one v-stitch at a time and we are going one by one all the way on the side we are going to pick up bars first v-stitch one bar second v-stitch two bars first v-stitch one bar second v-stitch two bars so we are going to alternate the bars I'm going to demonstrate picking up the first V-stitch and I'm going to pick up one bar because with every first stitch I pick up one bar. Keep space between the tubes. I'm picking up V-stitch number two and when I'm picking up V-stitch number two I'm picking up two bars we are working in a series of two v-stitches so I'm starting over 
The third one is named number one, picking up one bar. And the next one is number two. And at V-stitch number two, I have to pick up two bars. One V-stitch, one bar, second V-stitch, two bars. And continue all the way. You pick up one V-stitch a time and you alternate one bar and two bars. This is V-stitch number two. I have to pick up two bars. One, one, two, two, one, one, two, two, and go as far as possible. And then you just simple pull at your yarn. You can pull at whatever yarn tail you like. And your work will close nice without wrinkles. As if it's knitted together. A little rich on the inside and on the outside. Complete seamless. And this is how you join tubes with the end to the side. You join V-stitches to bars, alternating one and two. We also know how to join the ends of the tubes to each other with the V-stitches. And now we know how to join the sides to each other by joining pairs of vertical bars which gives a very nice seamless uh, texture. When you have knitted your tubes and closed them like this, it's time to start joining them to each other. You are going to put them together like this. Take four tubes of the same length, the same amount of rows. This is the smallest. Uh, these are the smallest because they fit into my screen now. And you are going to lay them on the table with the ends pointing outwards. So the ends pointing outwards. And you lay them like this, the short side to the long side. And then is this the yarn tail that we are going to use to join them. So this is the yarn tail that we are going to use to join them. We start joining from the corners to the middle using the method number three, where we are going to join the V-stitches to the vertical bars one or two a time. We are going to do it upside down, so we are taking the V-stitches of this tube and join them to the vertical bars of that tube. I will zoom in so I can show you how it's going to work. I take my yarn needle, put my yarn tail in, and since we are working upside down and the yarn tail is on the yellow part, I'm going to start with picking up my first bar. Try to find it. Yes. And I'm going to join that to the first V. And then I'm going to pick up the next two bars. And I'm going to join that to the second V. And then one bar, second V. Two bars, second V. I have a short tail, so I have to pull one, one, two.
this doesn't matter this will correct later so it doesn't have to be perfect here this is why you have to leave on long tails And when you're done all the way, you pull at your yarn. Make sure that the tension is okay. And then you simply are going to go another time under the bars and through the V-stitch where you ended. And I'm going to make a half knot around my needle by making a loop like this and put it around the needle. I'm going to pull it tight and then I push my needle through that loop and it's secured and I'm going to stick my yarn tail into the tube with the same color let it come out somewhere else pull and cut it and then this one is finished and you continue with the next one until you have them all four attached to each other and you do that with all your tubes so you make all uh, squares of your tubes and when you have all those squares we will continue with joining the squares to each other so let's continue oopsie i forgot to tell that when you have joined the four tubes into a square you have the remaining tails and you have to put them away because you have to make it completely clean before assembling to the other squares you take your yarn needle you put it into your uh, you put the end into your needle and then you stick your needle to the inside just where you finished between oops between the two layers and let it come out somewhere else make sure you go in between the layers and that not through the layers and then just pull through and simply cut the tail and then it's nice clean finished so do that with all your squares so that they are ready for joining to each other. In the next step we are going to join the squares to each other. We have our clean finished squares and take two and take a yarn. Don't cut it but just keep it like this and take a real real long piece. It has to fit around a couple of times, so make sure you take a real long piece. We are going to join in one single round all the way around. Starting at the corner. Joining all sides and closing when you're at the beginning again. So. Put the yarn into your yarn needle and we are going to start by joining the short side to the long side and then the long side to the long side. As we learned, we start with joining V-stitches to vertical bars for this piece and then we continue with joining bars to bars in pairs. We do this all the way to the corner and then repeat. So I'm going to start with picking up V-stitches and bars. Make sure that you have the back on the back and watching at the good side. And start joining by picking up the first V-stitch 
and connect it to the vertical bar. The way you learned it in the chapter before. When you're done with picking up the V-stitches and bars, you continue flueless by picking up bars and bars. So just continue by changing over to do this method. So I'm picking up one bar for a smooth uh, change. And then continue picking up bars a pair at a time all the way to the corner. Go as far as possible and when you're done you are going to pull at your yarn to make sure that the tension is correct all the way along this side. And when you need more yarn you just pull up a little bit more through your work. Make sure the tension is okay and then just flip over to the next corner and repeat the whole process along this side, picking up V-stitches and bars and picking up bars and bars and do this for all four sides and then I meet you back when I'm almost done. Like this. I cut my beginning till and I put it to the back through the hole and then continue closing up the last part of my squares.
go as far as possible. And when you're done, and make sure that tension is correct all the way around, you just put your yarn tail through the little hole to the back, where you are going to knot those tails firmly together. And then you simply cut the yarn and put the two tails into your yarn needle and stick them between two layers of one tube and then finish off. You are going to continue this process with all squares until your poncho is big enough. Make sure you always have the back side on the back and that you have the colors the way you want them. And join tubes as long as needed. And when you're finished joining the tubes like this, you are ready for the finishing off with the call. So let's continue to the next step where I will explain how to knit and add the call. The call is also knitted with the use of scrap yarn and close the same way as you close all tubes. This tube is 136 rows long. When you have closed the tubes, we are going to join the ends to each other. For that we are going to use the method where we join one V-stitch to one V-stitch. I take one of the yarn ends that are still hanging at my tube and I pick up the first V-stitch on one side and a V-stitch on the other side and pick them up all the way to the end. You can also use bigger tubes as in with a bigger circumstance as long as you use the same row count so you can make a higher call if you like to. When you have picked up all the V-stitches, just pull at your yarn and the ends will be joined to each other. Make sure the tension is okay. And now we are going to finish off this tail by poking through the same stitches as we did before. I'm making a half knot around my needle and push the needle through the knot. You can use whatever method you like to finish off, by the way. You don't have to use this. And then stick the needle through the tube and cut the tail. And then you have to finish off the other tail, but that's already secured. You only have to put it between the layers to hide it. And then we are ready for the last step. 
attaching the coal to the poncho. When you add a second tube, your coal will be higher, but you can also use a bigger machine with same row count. The last step is joining the coal to your poncho, and that's very simple. For that, we are going to join only bars to bars in pairs. Take another a long, long piece of yarn and put it into your yarn needle again. And then we are preparing to join. Make sure that the wrong side is facing to the table and the wrong side of the tube facing to the inside of the tube of your coal. And then find a spot to start attaching. I'm going to start at a corner and just pick up one vertical bar of the poncho and one vertical bar of the coal and then continue picking up two by two going in where you came out all the way to the corner. Go as far as possible and then pull at your yarn to get the tension correct. And then simply turn and continue joining the next side to the corner. Exactly the same by picking up bars in pairs. Continue this all the way around and when you are completely round you are going to join the end and beginning with each other as you did when you joined the squares to each other, knot and hide and then your poncho is finished. I would love to see your finished poncho. You can post it on my Facebook group or tag me on Instagram. You will find all the info in the description of this video. Have fun making this project and stay tuned to look what other possibilities are available on my free YouTube channel. Now you are ready for all kinds of projects with your circular knitting machine. I have more than 70 free workshops for all kinds of different projects. And all those free workshops are for different sizes machines. So check the description of this video for the link to all the workshops in just one list. And add it to your library because I'm adding constantly new projects. So stay updated and join my channel. Please give me a thumb up and feel free to tip me. Check the description of this video for all needed information and more. Stay safe with love from Holland. 
बाय बाय